Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we are continuing with our series on biology section of Spaceman November 2020 Combined Science Paper 2. In section B, candidates answer two questions, but we are going to revise all the questions in section B as we are doing the revision. Thank you guys, we have subscribed to my channel. If you haven't subscribed, this is the time guys just click subscribe to support this channel to grow number 7a is reading fig 7.1 shows a sketch diagram to represent double circulation in mammals part one deduce the types of circulation represented by cycles x and y so cycle x is called pulmonary circulation and cycle Y is known as systemic circulation. So let me take this question to describe what happens in double circulation in mammals. We have this iota which is a main artery in the board. It transports oxygenated blood from the heart to the rest of the board. And we have this vena cava. It is a vein that transports deoxygenated blood from the board to the heart. And after that, we are now having this pulmonary artery and this pulmonary vein. The role of pulmonary artery is to transport deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs. The reason why we transport deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs is for it to go and collect oxygen. When it moves from the lungs, it is now oxygenated blood. It is going to be retained back to the heart using this pulmonary vein. And after that, we are now having our blood being circulated to the rest of the board again by this iota. So this is the description of uh, double circulation in mammals. Part two suggests the reason for differences in the thickness of the walls of chambers C and D. So C we are having this side is right atrium and this side is left atrium. The wall of the left atrium Yes, a thicker wall than um, compared to the right atrium. This is a result of the fact that the left atrium is exposed to higher pressure and therefore does more work than the right atrium. That is the reason why it is thicker than the right atrium. Part 3. State and three symptoms of malaria. First, I'm going to describe what is malaria. Malaria is a life-threatening disease spread to humans by some types of mosquitoes. The symptoms include fever and flu-like illness, headache, muscle aches and tiredness, high temperature, sweating and chills. Part 4. State a symptoms of Ebola which is different from symptoms of malaria. Early symptoms of Ebola can be very similar to malaria, but as the patient is advancing in Ebola, patients show both internal and external bleeding, such as oozing from the gums or blood in the stools. That is a um, symptom that is of Ebola, which is different from that of malaria. Part 5. State and two effects of inhaling glue. Inhaling glue <clears throat> can cause confusion, slayed speech, mood swings, aggressive behavior, hallucinations, vomiting blackouts, and breathing difficulties. This was the complete solution for number 7. On 7A, part 1, we're supposed to deduce the type of circulation represented by cycles X and Y. 
circle uh, X is pulmonary circulation. It is the one that pertains to lungs. And cycle Y is systemic circulations. It pertains to the major circulation of the board. And then on part two, we were supposed to suggest the reason for the differences in the thickness of the walls in the right atrium and left atrium. So the reason why the left atrium walls are thicker than those of the right atrium is because in left atrium, uh, it is exposed to higher pressure and therefore it does more work than the right atrium. And then on part three, we're supposed to list three symptoms of malaria. I've listed more than three symptoms of malaria, which include fever and flu-like illnesses, headache, muscle aches and tiredness, high temperature and chills. We are supposed to just list three of these symptoms. And then on part four, we are supposed to state a symptom of Ebola, which is different from symptoms of malaria. So when you, in the early development of uh, Ebola, uh, the symptoms of Ebola and malaria are very similar, but as the disease is advancing, Patients start to show internal and external bleeding uh, from the gums or they start to see blood in the stools. That is the symptoms of Ebola, which is different from the symptom of malaria. And then finally, we're supposed to state N2 effects of inhaling glue. If you inhale glue, it causes confusion, slate speech, mood swings, aggressive behavior, hallucination, vomiting, blackouts, and breathing difficulties. We're supposed to just see least two effects from these effects I've written down. So we can now move on to number eight. Number eight A, Fig 8.1 shows a child suffering from a deficient disease. Name the deficient disease which the child is suffering from. So this disease is known as rickets. We call it Matea Inshona. Part two, describe how the disease named in one could be prevented. So rickets can easily be prevented by eating a diet that includes vitamin D and calcium spending some time in sunlight and if necessary taking vitamin d supplements part b describe the root of the sperm from the testes to the oviduct sperm cells pass through a series of ducts to reach outside of the board after they leave testes sperm passes through epidermis when the sperms leave the testes, they are immature and incapable of fertilizing over. So they complete their maturation process and become fertile as they move through the epidermis. Mature sperms are stored in the lower portion or tail of epidermis. After epidermis, Spams moves through the ductus deferens, ejaculatory duct, and urethra. They then enters female board through the vagina. From vagina, it enters the uterus through the cervix. From the uterus, spams enter the fallopian tube where the ovium is released by ovary, and they will fuse with one or one of the sperm resulting in fertilization. Part C, state one advantage of using condoms during sexual intercourse. I am going to explain what is sexual intercourse. It is a sexual activity in which a man puts his penis into the vagina of a woman. To prevent pregnancy, condoms are used which stop from meeting an egg. 
Advantage is condoms are highly effective against the most dangerous sexual transmitted infection, which is HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. They are also effective against unintended pregnancy. Define the term fertilization. So the simplest definition of fertilization is fusion of male and female gametes to form a zygote. Another way of um, explaining fertilization is it is a process in sexual reproduction that involves the union of male, which is sperm, and female, which is ovum, each with single haploid set of chromosome to produce diploid zygotes. This was the complete solution for number eight. On eight part one, we are given a diagram of a child that is suffering from rickets. So we are supposed to mention the deficient disease and we mentioned it as rickets. And then on part two, we are supposed to describe how the disease named in one could be prevented. So to prevent rickets, we eat a diet that includes vitamin D and calcium and also you should spend some time in sunlight and if necessary taking vitamin D supplements. And then on part B, we're supposed to describe the root of the sperm from the testes where they are produced, the oviduct. So the sperms, so they pass through a series of ducts to reach outside of the board. After they leave the testes, sperm passes through epidermis. When sperm leaves the testes, they are immature and incapable of fertilizing the ovum. So they complete their maturation process and become fertile as they move through the epidermis. Mature sperm are stored in the lower portion or tail of the epidermis. After that, they pass through ductus deferens, ejaculatory duct, and then urethra. Sperms enter female board through vagina. From vagina, it enters the uterus through the cervix. From the uterus, sperm enter the fallopian tube where the ovum released by the ovary wall fills with one of the sperms resulting in fertilization. And then on part C, we're supposed to state one advantage of using condoms during sexual intercourse. So condoms are highly effective against the most dangerous sexual transmitted infection, which is HIV. And also they're effective against unintended pregnancy. And then finally, we're supposed to define the term fertilization. It is a process in sexual reproduction that involves the union of sperm and ovum with the single haploid set of chromosome to produce diploid zygote. Another simple definition of fertilization is the fusion of male and female gametes to form a zygote. So let's move on to number nine. Number nine A, Fig 9.1 shows gaseous exchange in the alveoli of a mammal. Name the gases moves moving in direction shown by arrow R and arrow S. So R is showing carbon dioxide, while list S is showing oxygen. During gaseous exchange, oxygen moves from the lungs to the bloodstream. At the same time, carbon dioxide passes from the blood to the lungs. Part 2. Describe and explain how the alveoli is adapted for gaseous exchange. So the first team description I'm going to give is that alveoli are one cell thick, which gives a short diffusion distance. They have permeable walls that enable the gases to pass through. They are moist, 
This is for the dissolution of gases in the moisture. It helps them to pass across the gaseous exchange surface. Uh, alveoli have extensive blood supply, which ensures that the blood rich in oxygen is carried away from the lungs and blood rich in carbon dioxide is carried to the lungs. They have a large diffusion gradient. Breathing guarantees that the concentration of oxygen in alveoli is greater than the concentration in capillaries to ensure movement of oxygen from the alveoli to the blood. Alveoli are highly folded, meaning there is higher surface area volume ratio for gaseous exchange. Part B, define the terms plasmolysis and tegidit. So plasmolysis is when plant cells loses water after being placed in a hypertonic solution, which is a solution that has higher concentration of solutes than the cell does. Water flows out of the cells and into the surrounding fluid due to osmosis. This causes the protoplasm, protoplasm to shrink away from the cell wall. And then tegidit is a state of swollen, especially due to high fluid content. Tegidit is essential in plant cells to make them keep standing upright, being firm and rigid. So in summer, uh, on number nine, part one, we're supposed to name the gases moving in the directions shown by arrows, ara and ace. So we said ARA is carbon dioxide, while least ACE is oxygen. During gaseous exchange, oxygen moves from the lungs to the bloodstream. At the same time, carbon dioxide passes from blood to the lungs. Then on part two, we're supposed to describe and explain how the alveoli is adapted for gaseous exchange. So in summer, we have said alveoli are one cell thick, which gives a short diffusion distance. They have permeable walls, which enable gases to pass through. Alveoli are highly folded, meaning there is higher surface area to volume ratio for gaseous exchange. They are covered by rich blood supply of capillaries. This provides a diffusion gradient for oxygen to move into the blood and carbon dioxide to move into the lungs. They have moist wall. The dissolution of gases in the moisture helps them to pass across the gaseous exchange surface area. And then on B, we're supposed to define the terms plasmolysis and tegidit. So plasmolysis is when plant cells loses water after being placed in the hypertonic solution, which is a solution that have higher concentration of solutes than the cell does. So water flows out of the cells due to osmosis, causing the protoplasm to shrink away from the cell wall. And then tegidit is a state of swollen due to high fluid content it is essential in plant cells to make them stand upright and being firm and rigid. So this marks the end of our revision today on biology. See you tomorrow on chemistry section. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share my videos. I love you all. This is Eve signing out.